When you're running your own business or freelancing, having motivation is really important. So what do you do when you are feeling low in motivation? In this video, I talk with mindset coach Danny Evergreen and brand designer Laura Robinson about what motivates us and what we do when the motivation isn't there. So if you're not feeling very motivated right now, stay tuned because we'll give you some tips on how to motivate yourself. I'm Laura Bean and this is Creative Little World. So let's start off, um, ladies, what motivated you to start your business in the first place? Laura Bean, let's go to you. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, I mean, gosh, I think to start with, I feel like we're all feeling a little unmotivated. It's that kind of still getting out that January slump, aren't we? So this feels like a really good topic for now. But yeah, to start my business, the motivation, I guess, was... Uh, at the time, it was my situation because I was living with young stepkids. So it was kind of the whole, right, I need that flexibility. and I want to be able to balance my life around, you know, having this new family. Um, and it was that was the kind of initial motivation was, well, how do I get a more flexible working life? And I know that's quite a common thing with, with freelancers. So that was the first kind of motivation. And then as I got into it, the motivation became around the excitement of creating your own stuff, your own products, your own services and having that freedom. And that became like the exciting thing. So each time I would say, right, oh, I could start this new product. So like uh, my recent one, like my content packages and I'd sit there and I'd plan out what they were going to be. And it would suddenly feel this motivation because I'd be excited by what I was about to bring to the table, how it would go, how I was going to get it out there. And that's always for me, like the, even when business is slow or I'm a bit worried about, you know, the clients are a bit quiet or or things like that, that kind of gives me that drive, that kick and going, right, okay, well, I need to do something new, bring something new to the table to push my business or try something else out, try a new sales technique. Or like when I did my direct uh, direct mail campaign, it's that kind of, constant opportunity for new ideas and new ways of bringing in business and I think that's always been a a bit of a kicker for me what about you Laura um so it's going back to really like your why isn't it why um why did you start this business why did you get into this business and obviously you know the joy that you find from helping clients is is massive, isn't it, Laura? Like having that, you know, effect on someone else's business and knowing that what you're doing is really going to help to propel them, you know, especially, you know, in the copy or in the branding. It's it's amazing to have that buzz back that you've actually cracked what the client wanted. And it's it's that constant kind of dopamine hit that you get from knowing that you've done a great job, knowing that you've um, you know achieved what they wanted to achieve, that they're, you know, the expectations are massive and you've hit them. And it's knowing that um that keeps you kind of going in business and keeps you motivated. But the reason I started the business again was um small children. I've worked since I was 16. I've always had a boss. Um, not always got on with them. Um, and, um, you know, graphics is an art. So, you know, it's all like, it's an opinionated piece in some ways. So I kind of clashed with a few bosses and I was like, you know what, I just want to work for myself. I just want to, you know, get out there and put my own stamp on things and make sure that I get really in with the clients. I like that hands-on hand holding with my clients more. Um, but I absolutely, um, adore, working with people and that really motivates me I suppose that was my big why why I started my business what about you Danny what was your why yeah it's interesting I I didn't ever kind of go I want to run my own business um I've I've had lots of different I mean I I interestingly I had my own business as a dance teacher before I started my coaching business um but again that was kind of just out of I couldn't find anywhere to teach what I wanted to teach so I set up my own classes um and it's very much the same with coaching really is that I didn't know where else to find I couldn't find a job that fit what I wanted to do um I've always loved working with people I always wanted to make a difference I would have loved to be a teacher but my experiences in mainstream schools and national curriculum it wasn't right for me um and the level of pressure um that people are under in that environment I just was like I don't want to put myself in that environment so I was like well how can I do what I want to do and 
running my own business as a coach was just the obvious thing to do. So um, it very much was from a point of wanting to make a difference and wanting to help people and feel like I could share things that I've learned that can help other people. Um, and the business was just like the tool to do that. And I think it's really interesting what you both shared of like the reason you start and the reason you're still doing it they're not always exactly the same. You know, you might start from a practical point of view or from being frustrated with where you're at and you're kind of going, well, actually, I don't enjoy, you know, being told what to do and working for someone else. I want to have my freedom or I need freedom for my family life or whatever it is. But I think it's really important to check in with that because it isn't always the same, you know, especially a few years down the line, your motivation, your reasons for doing what you're doing now, your why can shift. Um, and I think it is important to check in, like you said, Laura, with your why and why am I doing it right now? You know, what's important to me right now? Because when Laura was, Bean was talking that, you know, there was a lot of creativity, being able to create those new ideas and solutions. And then Laura, Robinson, you were talking a lot about like the meaning that you bring and how you make a difference. And understanding that in ourselves is then it allows us to make sure that we're making decisions that suit that. Um, whether that's in our business or just in our life in general, because I think it's very easy to forget that and get caught up in in everything else that you know you need to do that isn't maybe the stuff that is exciting and creative or that you feel really meaningful um so like you mentioned at the beginning Laura Bean you know all been through periods where we're maybe not feeling so motivated um what you know do you struggle with motivation how do you find you know and how do you keep going when you're maybe struggling with motivation yeah I mean I absolutely do um and I think it's it you know most people can honestly say that they do at some point whether it's a regular thing or not I think um I'm always a bit reluctant to blame January for things because I think a lot of people oh it's January it's January it's not always January's fault but there is an element of you know we you know the long month and the, the sort of dark days and the bad weather um and that can be a little bit demotivating and not keep you you know at your best um but I also think I go in waves. So I'll have times where I will feel more more motivated. It could be even weekly. Like one week I'll be, right, I'm at my desk, I'm excited, I've got ideas flowing. And the next week I'll think, oh, God, I really can't, I can't be bothered. I am one of those people that I still, I'm almost like a really strict boss to myself in terms that I will always be at my desk and work, you know, I've, everyone says about flexibility well I'm a bit like oh, no, no you know nine to five <laughs> I'm not really a very flexible freelancer but even when I'm not feeling that motivated I find well if I come you know even if I take my laptop and sit on the sofa I'm like right okay well you don't feel like being here put yourself in a space where you feel a bit more comfortable and I'll maybe do a job that's a little bit more like simple or less taxing on my brain. Um, maybe it's not client work because I'm not feeling my best. And maybe I'll just be like, right, I'll focus on writing a blog for my own website. Although obviously I still want it to be really good. I can take my time with it and just slowly working through it and not putting the pressure on. I think that's a big thing, isn't it? Because we put so much pressure on ourselves to perform all the time. And one of the things, and, you know, sorry for anyone listening that fringes at this, but as women as well, when we're going through like hormonal cycles, it's, I remember someone saying to me once, like, put it in your calendar that this week is not a good week to, you know, have lots of calls or put yourself out there too much because you know you won't be feeling great. And that really resonated with me. And I thought, actually, it is about that. It's planning in time to feel a bit low. If you know you're going to have a a week or so or you're not at your best during certain times a year month whatever it is allow yourself to be a little bit unmotivated and and, and put in jobs that are going to help you still tick things along and still progress but they don't need you to be your full action self and repairing on videos and on social media all the time and even in those times where you are feeling particularly motivated then perhaps putting in jobs to schedule ahead of time so like you know schedule social media for the next week when you know you might not be feeling as great so yeah that's kind of how I do it I think it's just allowing you to not be okay as well you're allowed to be unmotivated and the pressure I think sometimes when you're when you are feeling like that the pressure you put on yourself to then be motivated you know try and push yourself into that is actually can be counteractive as well make you just feel worse about yourself 
What about it can be a massive downward spiral, can't it, as well? Yeah. You know, because we are alone a lot of the time. You know, we're three entrepreneurs. We all work for ourselves. You know, we haven't got a team behind us. So you can get in your own head quite a bit and get on a bit of a downward spiral because, you know, oh, I haven't got to this again. I haven't done that again. Your to-do list is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I pulled a one o'clock in the morning, not last night, the night before, because I had a deadline. And I hadn't been motivated to do anything. And it was like, right, I've got to, I've got to do it now. I've got to get into it. So is motivation, is that, is that really there? Is it a real thing? Or is it just, I can't be bothered? <laughs> how do you how do you pull motivation into you? You know, how do you get motivated? Because I'm you need to realize what actually motivates you. Like a deadline motivates me like anything. <laughs> Hence yeah. the one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> um, so it's like you need to really know yourself in some ways as an entrepreneur you need to know what is going to motivate me like is it a check-in with your other half every day and say right I've done this this and this because you know I haven't sat on the sofa watching daytime tv you know it's making sure that you put in things in in yourself and know yourself well enough knowing like you say your time of the month is really important because I know through running I can't do long runs at certain times of the month I know there'll be awful runs I know my training will be awful but if I know that in advance then I'll book it in you know you know when the kids are going to be off so I'm not going to be as active on social media so it's it, you've got to really know yourself as an entrepreneur to be able to keep your motivation high and also surround yourself that pe with people that will keep your motivation high you know it's very easy to all be down and all be low and all be sad because you know there's no motivation and oh this is a struggle and that is a struggle I think you've really got to watch your mindset quite a lot as an entrepreneur so what what do you reckon on tips for getting some motivation Danny is there anything mindset wise that we need to be putting into practice yeah, I mean, I think you've both mentioned some really good points. Like one is our expectations for ourselves and being aware of things like hormonal cycles or, you know, commitments with children or family, things that mean that we're not going to be able to maybe play full out so that we can set realistic expectations around that. Um, we we generally try and get way more done. You know, we set expectations for way more than we can actually achieve. So you'll hear a lot of that kind of eat the frog and get the big thing done first. And yeah, that is brilliant if you can do that, but then there are going to be days where you're probably just not in the right place to do that. So as Laura Beam was saying, you know, sometimes you just need to give yourself a break and accept that, you know what, I'm not in the right place. And resting is often the best way to get that motivation back because when you just keep trying to push and push and push, um, you're just pushing and battling against yourself. So sometimes you just need to, do something else and we talk about like procrastination or not procrastination if you're constantly avoiding something is not going to get you where you want to be but actually kind of active procrastination sometimes you need to deliberately take yourself away from something to give yourself the headspace you know and that could be doing another task or project or it could be doing the washing up or going for a walk or just you know going out for lunch with your husband it could be something completely non-work related but actually giving yourself a break is often the best way to then get really motivated and, and productive again, because we're not machines and we kind of forget that we can't push all the time. And I think when you're an entrepreneur or a um, you know, freelancer, you don't have those deadlines imposed by someone else all the time. And that can be really difficult. So I think it's knowing, like you said, Laura, knowing yourself, knowing what works for you. And that takes experimentation. You're not gonna know that when you start. Finding different methods, trying them out, do you need some kind of accountability from someone else, whether that's a coach, whether that's your partner or a friend or a fellow entrepreneur or freelancer to say, I'm going to have done this by this date. I want you to check in with me, you know, and setting yourself those deadlines. Are you someone who could be really disciplined and say, my deadline is Friday and it's going to be done by Friday? Or do you need someone else to kind of hold you to that? Um, and giving you, yeah, definitely giving yourself a break. Um, but again, I think coming back to your why, like for me, I, I struggle with social media, if I'm being honest, because I don't particularly enjoy consuming it. Um, and I often just think, does, any, does anyone really want to see this or hear this? And it doesn't, to me, feel that meaningful in terms of my business. I would much rather be on a call with a client, you know? So I just think, oh, do I need to give my energy to that? <clears throat> but actually, 
sometimes I'm reminded that that can be really useful because I was speaking to someone yesterday. Um, so she's in her twenties. She's a, a good kind of family friend and I don't coach her kind of officially, but I've helped her out with a few things. I've sent her a few kind of motivational and um, inspirational messages just to kind of go, you can do this. Come on, you're doing all right. And she said to me yesterday, she was like, oh, I've got a bit of a confession. I thought, oh God, what's she going to say? You know, I, you, I, I watch your videos and I share them with my friends and I told them that you're like my personal life coach, but I, I'm not paying you. And I was like, that's oh. okay. That's fine. And she's like, and I share your, I show them your Facebook videos. And I was like, that's fine. Like, that's what they're there for. Um, but it just reminded me that actually when I do put stuff out there, that the, she gets a lot from it. So even if that one person gets something from it, that then reminds me it's worth doing. So yeah. then I, now I'm motivated. Now I'm like, oh, I want to do a load more videos. And I was like, oh, what other topics would you like to hear? And I've got the motivation to go and do a load more because I can see the meaning in it. And I think it's, again, reminding yourself what is meaningful to you, which isn't the same for everyone. For some people, the financial reward really motivates them. And for others, it could be, you know, the freedom that's going to come from it. It could be making the difference. It's the creativity of doing the project. So what is it that you find really exciting and motivating and reminding yourself of that and finding ways to tap back into that um, because it's very easy to, to lose that and uh, yeah, just get lost in the kind of the day to day, I think. Yeah, um, I think what you've just said really resonated there with the whole, sometimes you don't see the reward straight away. And that's really hard to when you're promoting a business and you're trying to get new clients in and you're doing things like social media you don't necessarily, you know, you do a few posts for a few weeks. It doesn't equal anything. It might not be much reach or engagement. You certainly don't have any inquiries for it. And it can feel really demotivating. But it's when you start seeing the long-term results that those can be, you know, you know, like you said, someone's watching your videos and they're sharing them. And actually, they're helping to spread your message further than you probably realised it was going. And it's those little things, isn't it? When you have those little nice little kicks to remind you oh actually it's worth doing it and I think especially when it comes to promoting your business it's also just allowing yourself to time to look at what's working and what's not and saying well do you know what okay like I've been doing this for a while it's not it's not bringing me results maybe it's time to you know sunset that idea and let's have a look at a new idea and try something new because that can also like reinvigorate you re-motivate you and it's checking in on what's working and what's not and just giving yourself, you know, an opportunity to to learn from what's happening. And OK, something hasn't worked and that feels really demotivating. But what can you do instead? What can you do that, that should that will, will spark some new ideas or spark something else that you can try to give some more motivation? So I think for me, that like when something isn't working or it doesn't feel like I'm getting the rewards it should, it is demotivating but then it's like well what can I do instead and that's what like I said at the beginning of this what sort of motivates me is that kind of, right okay let's have a new idea let's have a new thing and taking you away like you said as well Danny taking yourself away from the situation for a while just to give your mind a break from it and to reset and and allow that time to feel that motivation again because it's the pressure isn't it a lot of it's the pressure I was working on a a, a blog for a client on Monday and it was it was a there were so many stats and, and things that had to go into this it was so much research that my mind just was fried and I got to a point where I was like I just I can't physically carry on with this and I put it down and I basically walked away and I went and did something I think I just went and unloaded the dish what you know just did a few normal jobs and I came back to it the next morning and I felt fine. And I got right, right boom, new, new lease of energy, got on with it, got it finished, really pleased with it. But I just needed to step away for that moment rather than trying to, I think, force myself to carry on, even though I was feeling very unmotivated. I needed that break to come back and, and then do the job that, you know, the good job that I knew I could do. Yeah, it's knowing that you've... You've got to give yourself a buffer, haven't you, as well, a time, because you know yourself that that may happen, you know, so you you know yourself that well, that you know that actually this project, I'm going to try and get through it, but actually knowing you've got that time that you can step back. So it's 
you know, giving yourself deadlines that you've got built in extra time. Because sometimes I can look at a design and think, God, that's awful. A two-year-old could do it. And I'm like, oh, I hate it. I hate it. Go away. Like you say, have a sleep, go over, you know, another day, come back to it and think, oh my God, did I do that? That looks brilliant. And it's, and it's sometimes it's, it just need to get out your own brain, out of your own mind and, and concentrate on something else. But when motivation kicks in, then you need to know that, you know what, I'm going all in. I'm, I'm really motivated to get this project finished. I've really got this great idea. And you need to give yourself time to really, really push and, and get it blasted through. Because if we all had motivation all the time, we'd all have a million pounds in the bank and, and six packs. You know, it's it's that kind of, you know, you've got to keep doing the reps to get to where you want to get to. And and sometimes I think you've got to realize that motivation isn't going to come as well. And you know what? I'm, I'm here. I'm a professional. This is my job. And I've got to just keep battering through it. And I think don't wait for motivation all the time. I think a lot of people wait for motivation and oh, I'll do it when I'm motivated or I'll get to that next. And I think sometimes you've got to, you've got to be a grown up. You've got to be the entrepreneur and you've got to actually just get the job done. Cause I, I run an eat the frog session, as you both know, to get those jobs done. And I did it personally. It was personally just for me because I'd got things like, you know, I'm, I'm not great with my accounts. I'm not great with writing blogs and copy and they're the things that get pushed down further on my to-do list because I'm not motivated to do it so it was like you know what this once a month this is the time where I am going to write that blog and I'm going to get my account sorted and I'm going to smash it and you have been really good they've really helped me get those bottom to-do list things those things that you keep pushing down getting them moved back up to the top so uh yeah sometimes motivation isn't going to come to you um so having tricks in your toolbox on how to do it and how to get motivation is really helpful. Yeah, definitely. I think it's having those strategies in place, isn't it? And again, being having that awareness, like sometimes you are just going to have to be consistently doing something and you might not feel super motivated. And there's certain things, if you're running a business and you're not at the stage where you're ready to outsource, there might be things that you're never really going to be motivated to do because they don't interest you. But I think there's a big difference between not being motivated to do the things that normally excite you and normally are interested and just the things that you're just never motivated to do, you know? And, but if they need doing, it's like, you need to find a way to do them. It's the same as, you know, if you really do want to get fitter and you really do want to start some exercise, but you don't feel motivated to exercise because you maybe have never really enjoyed it. It's, you've got to find a way to get yourself started and to be consistent with it. And then hopefully over time you start to enjoy it and then it's easier and then you feel motivated because you see the results. But generally when you start something, you're not maybe motivated because you've not done it before. You don't know how it's going to go, et cetera. So I think it's that balance. It's like if you're constantly doing something or you're, you're kind of whole thing and you're doing, you're working all the time and you just feel flat, then something's not quite working and maybe you need to revisit is it, you know, how you're working? Is it what you're working on? There's maybe something not quite right that doesn't suit you. But if it's specifically, if it's a part of your business, then it's like, well, how can you help yourself to make sure that gets done? Because like you say, Laura, you, you know, it might never come. You might never feel motivated to do that, but it still needs doing. So, you know, can you create that monthly time slot? Can you find just an accountability partner or a group? There's loads of things online now as well, where you can like, sign up to meet other people it's sometimes not even people you know on like a zoom call and just work so that you're kind of accountable to them and you're not watching daytime tv or whatever else you might do instead um so i think it is it's, it's looking for those tools and strategies that work for you maybe you just need to put some music on and dance around while you're doing some housework for 10 minutes and then you feel energized you know what what helps you to kind of get in the zone to just get it done um so that you can move on with the stuff that's a bit more interesting i think yeah, so I have my goals written by the side of my computer. So I know what my 10-year goal, my five-year goal, my three-year goal, and that monthly goal is. So I've got those written by the side of me. I've got a vision board. So I'm like, look, every time I'm, I find my mind wandering and I'm not concentrating, I'm like, no, look, that's your goal. That's the, doing this gets you there. So it's it's making sure that you've got all these little prompts to keep reminding you again of your why, of why you're doing it. So Laura, what what tricks do you have what are your tricks for keeping motivated? Uh, very similar. I've got, you know, a wall full of ideas and goals and and sort of place, you know, where I want to be and how the steps and how to get there. 
And I think it's just constantly for me thinking about, and as you said at the beginning, Laura, that the why behind it, and as Danny said, that changes all the time. So homing in on what it is that's given me motivation and what I want out of that. And as entrepreneurs, freelancers, we have that flexibility in our businesses to, you know, create services, create packages that also feel motivational to us as well. So, you know, if you're if you're running a business and you your heart's not in the business, you're never going to feel motivated to turn up and get the work in and do the work, are you? So it's thinking about what you can offer that brings you some joy as well as, you know, help someone else. And I think that's for me is is one of the reasons I, you know, will have a review of things and I'll think, do you know what, this service isn't particularly working for me anymore. I don't really enjoy delivering it or for whatever reason it's not, you know, being picked up. And I was like, so what can I change about that? And what can I offer that gives me a sense of excitement and pride in, you know, promoting it and getting out there and, and telling people about it and what is going to then hopefully when the clients come in, be work that I enjoy doing. So for me, I think it's just that constant review of things. If things aren't going quite so well, I'm feeling a little motivated. Just having a review, and what can I, what can I do that will bring a little bit more excitement back in to what I'm doing and the business? Yeah, I think environment's really important to consider as well. You know, do you love working from home by yourself? Is like if you're working from home on your own as a freelancer or an entrepreneur, does that actually suit you? Because I know that for me, it doesn't really suit me to be at home by myself all the time. So I deliberately create slots where I can go and do some admin or marketing from a coffee shop or a co-working space. Um, I might go and train in different places. And I deliberately am doing a lot more in-person coaching and training this year because I've realized that actually as, as, as convenient as it is to be able to coach online, it doesn't suit me to be at home looking at a screen all day, every day. So mm. I want to be out more. Whereas for some people, they might love the convenience or it might really work for them. But again, it's it's just stopping to think, you know, does this work for me? What energizes me? What suits me? Um, what about things like reviews and testimonials? Do you guys have, um, like I know some people have a record of them that they can look back at to remind them when they're maybe feeling a bit demotivated. Do you guys have anything like that? Mine's called When Things Go to SHIT. Um, folder on my screen <laughs> and it's when I feel like that and I feel bad and it's all the kind words that like clients have messaged me or things I've seen you know my work out there um in the real world kind of thing um and it's yeah I've, I've got a folder like that on my screen and it's yeah it's for those times where I just think god I'm rubbish or I should I be doing this or or I feel a bit out of my depth here and I'm like no 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 do you know what you've got 20 years under your belt and look at all these people all these nice things that people have said about your work and look at the results your clients have got from your work so yeah I have that what about you Laura Bean do you have that yeah I have I mine's called a smile file and it's literally just said smile on it so it is that it's open it up and go okay because you you know again and I don't know whether it's that kind of attraction thing isn't it where where all of a sudden you have one bad thing will happen and it feels like everything then's going wrong and it just happens that a couple of clients will come back with feedback that you know makes you feel oh well, they were obviously weren't as happy as with it as you were hoping or and it just that sort of time it is really good to look at those files or testimonials and and remind yourself actually like you you are quite capable because otherwise again it's that that spiral isn't it thinking oh I'm no I'm no good and that's very unmotivating is it once you're suddenly thinking gosh I'm, I'm rubbish at what I'm doing it's all going wrong why am I doing this or you see someone in your industry doing something that you think oh, I could have done that or oh, yeah. I wanted to do that and that's another thing that makes you think oh my god is, is yeah can be very demotivating can't it when you see everyone that looks like they're they're smashing it and you you know most of the time I mean I have this I have conversations with a lot of people that you think gosh yeah you're absolutely out there like you're smashing this and actually when you talk to them they're like well yeah it's not been that easy and this is difficult and you realize okay that's they're putting the appearance out there but they're still going through the same struggles they're still having days where they feel unmotivated so it's not you know and I was like you shouldn't compare yourself to anyone didn't you because that's I mean you can probably go a bit further on that Danny because that is just 
I think that's a, a thing we all do, isn't it? Is especially with social media, is compare ourselves to everyone else out there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I could talk just for an hour just about comparison. It's like there's a reason they say it's the thief of joy. You know, you compare yourself, and and typically when we're comparing ourselves to each other, we're either comparing ourselves to make ourselves feel better or to make ourselves feel worse. We're either going, oh, I've got a nicer car than them or, oh, their car's better than mine, you know, or they're doing better than me or, and it doesn't really help you in any way. So it's, it's so easy to do. And especially with social media, there's so much stuff out there. If you're looking at other people and you're finding it inspiring, then that's brilliant. But if you're looking at other people's work and going, oh, that's a bit better than mine or, oh, they're doing great and I'm not, then maybe just stop looking at them. Cause it's not, you know, it's not helping. Um, but I think, yeah, I think you made some really good points, Ella. I think having those, I love the names that you've both got for your your smile file um, and your your SHIT. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case there's kids listening. I think it's great that you need you do need that thing to remind you. Um, and I think another thing that's really useful, I find, is journaling. So, um, you know, just ask, reminding yourself of all the things that you do well, you know, make a list of all your achievements. Have a look back at some of the work that you're really proud of. Think about the impact that you've had, you know, whatever works for you, whether that's journaling and words, whether that's looking back at photos or images. But having that thing that you can go back to that goes, I don't know what actually I do know what I'm talking about. I am good at what I do um, and I'm here for a reason. And at the end of the day, you are the only version of you that will ever exist. You know, there's no one else like you. Your story is unique. Your way of doing things is unique, the way that you think, because you've seen, even if you sat in the same room as another person for the whole your whole life, you'll have a different perspective because that's just how our brains work. So what you do can't be replicated by anyone. They can use the same words and the same pictures, but it's not the same because it's not coming from you. So I think that's when we start to compare ourselves. It's like, well, then whatever they're doing, it's not you. And people actually, we know people by people, right? We don't buy based on what someone does. We buy based on the person that does it and the way that we connect to them. So I think it's really useful to remind ourselves of that sometimes and, and remember that actually it doesn't matter what anyone else is doing because you're never going to do what they do and they're never going to do what you do in exactly the same way. So just focus in on what you do and what you want to do because you you don't know, like Laura was saying, you, you'd think that someone's out there having an amazing time and then in reality, they're actually finding it really tough or they're maybe just not enjoying it. You know, they could be really successful and making loads of money, but be miserable. Mm -hmm. um, and I often, you know, remind myself of my values and what's important to me is not the same as other people. I'm not working as many hours as I could. I'm not making as much money as I could but I spend time with my family and I do things that matter to me and I'm happy. And to me, that's more important to someone else. It might not be to someone else, you know, what makes them happy and what's important to them will be different. And that's totally fine. But I think it's again, coming back to that why and reminding yourself of what matters to you and what, you know, what your goals are really not what you think they should be, but actually, you know, what do you really want? What do you want your everyday life to be like? And how do you make that a reality and how does your work contribute to that? yeah brilliant yeah. points there really good yeah and the journaling yeah I'm highly a big fan of journaling um you know making sure that you're writing down how you're feeling and I write down my top three goals every every more first thing the three goals that I'm aiming for because I think the more I write it the more it's getting into my brain to kind of help with my motivation but yeah really it's, good it's, tips there it's finding what works for you isn't it like you know I'm I see swimmer so in the morning it's getting down there and getting in the sea and just you know waking myself up and feeling that motivation for the day and I really feel if I don't do that activity I'm like mm, mm, the day's a bit because mm, I haven't given myself that that buzz so it's it's finding that you know whether it's journalism or an activity or um journaling sorry not journalism journaling um and finding what works for you as well and I, and again, like we go back to that, the pressure of what everyone else is doing or what society says she should be doing. And that could be very demotivating. So finding out what, what is it that fills you with joy and, and gives you that motivation. Mm -hmm.